A Well-Being Healthy Life Chapter 1 Well-Being Guide Be healthy for life according to Forum Borealis. Viruses and germs are what they are. Humans don't really understand them. I have no problem with an emergency room doctor patching me up after an accident but most so-called medicine that a doctor does is prescribe a chemical drug as opposed to a natural substance or herb from traditional medicine. Hippocrates once said a doctor's job is to entertain the patient while the patient heals naturally by nature. We have given doctors godlike status. A doctor says take this pill and we fall for it like a bunch of idiots. Most prescription and over-the-counter drugs are a useless waste of money. They call it the placebo effect. Any pill gives a person the idea that the pill contains some advanced medical science that will cure him or her so he or she gets a positive mental effect from it. Beware of the side effects of many drugs. A lot is about your immune system. If yours is strong and you have an alkaline body as opposed to an acidic body, you can fight off most germs. Look it up it up online, alkaline foods versus acidic foods. The other thing is oxygen through exercise for an alkaline body. Sugar feeds germs and viruses in the body. I eat very little sugar. I use stevia for a sweetener and the liquid drink mix collade stuff sweetened with sucralose. 5 grams tower, Wi-Fi and EMF radiation all shoot beams, waves and emphs that turn off the production of melatonin in human beings. Melatonin is the determinant of intracellular glutathione production. At nighttime, we produce melatonin but it's interfered with. Production is turned off. By invisible Wi-Fi and EMFs. Avoid Wi-Fi. Try to live in a rural area to avoid cell phone towers everywhere in the city. Use your cell phone a a foot away from your head with a speaker or headphones and microphone. There are Faraday grids slash boxes to put around smart meters and other electrical gadgets to keep the electricity and EMFs from getting out. EMFs are destroying and weakening the immune systems of people. Avoid radiation. It weakens the body. There are now 5 gram satellites that beam the earth. It's hard to be a healthy human in this modern society. Most people in the city can pick up at least 10 Wi-Fi signals from the internet customers living near them. These EMFs from cell phones and Wi-Fi are not a joke. Everybody pretends they're harmless but they're not. There are GMO foods and the poor nutrient fruits and vegetables in general. There are heavy metals in the food supply that poison the body. Smoking, alcohol and recreational drugs are all bad for health. In the book called The Invisible Rainbow, the guy says that there's a connection between viruses and electromagnetism. These invisible waves weaken our bodies. There is a lot of money in telecommunications. Nobody is going to say telecom waves are bad for health. It's the same idea with aspartame. It's a neurotoxin and a poison but it makes a lot of money as a low-calorie sweetener so it stays. There's no turning back. The system is not out for your health. You have to take care of yourself. Long-living people live simple lives in the country growing their own food. The soil at industrial farms is poor. There is something to homeopathic medicine, the idea that you dilute a virus, mix it with water then take a bit orally and it helps heal you or otherwise keep you strong. We don't really know about germs. One theory of illness is germ theory. We don't know if germs cause illness. Some people say it's a weak body. One guy said that gays caught AIDS because of their unhealthy lifestyles. It was not the virus per se. Don't underestimate 5 grams as a cause of running down our immune systems. Turn your Wi-Fi off at night. Eat healthy foods. The more oxygen you take in, the healthier you are. Every time you light up both a marijuana cigarette and a tobacco cigarette, you create huge amounts of carbon monoxide that is a major poison. Minimize stress. Keep a peaceful mind. Turning off supplies of oxygen to the body produces more inflammation as with smoking. By getting exercise and good air into the lungs, you're reducing your ability to make inflammatory states in the body. It seems like a temperature of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius is optimal for health. A lack of vitamin D in the winter due to lack of sunshine is bad for health. 
Vitamin C with rose hips is powerful to block virus replication and to stimulate the immune system. Selenium is a good supplement. Brazil nuts are high in selenium. Herd immunity stopped most plagues in the past. A clean as in hygiene lifestyle keeps a person healthy. Preserve foods with refrigeration. Wash your hands. Zinc builds up the immune system. Have the attitude of going out and playing. Get out in the sun and you make vitamin D. Chaga and elderberry are good. Whey, colostrum, and probiotics, yogurt, build the immune system up. When you burn food into charcoal, you're creating a carcinogen. Heat food but don't burn it. Don't listen to the widespread panic on TV. Omega-3 oils build up the immune system. Pumpkin seeds are high in zinc. The human race thrives on greed. All that stuff on TV called the mainstream news is someone's propaganda to try to get money and power over you. You're on your own for your health. Don't listen to them boobs out there in the mainstream. Look for the truly wise people in alternative places where people think for themselves. In the end, humans will not beat Mother Nature. I believe that humans will pollute the planet and overpopulate it until the Earth kills most of them off. Technology can't solve everything. It will probably eventually pollute us to death. Nobody ever talks about Fulushima which constantly spews radiation into the one ocean on Earth. Collodial silver helps with purifying the body. Take care of your money so you don't live in poverty. Live a pleasant life. Have a pet to love. Own your life. Don't let some politician define life for you. To me, everyone in the mainstream is a greedy person out for themselves, not out to help me. Gandhi said health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Virgil said the greatest wealth is health. Hippocrates said let food be thy medicine and medicine. Be thy food. Before healing others heal yourself. Thibaut said no time for your health today no health for your time tomorrow. Those who think they have no time for healthy eating. Will sooner or later have to find time for illness. Edward Stanley. The best six doctors are. Sunshine. Water. Rest. Air. Exercise. Diet. Hippocrates reminded us the natural healing force in each one of us. Is the greatest force in getting well. No matter how much it gets abused, the body can restore balance. Stop interfering with nature. Your body hears everything your mind says. Health is a relationship between you and your body. Doctors won't make you healthy. Nutritionists won't make you slim. Teachers want to make you smart. Trainers want to make you fit. You have to take responsibility. Save yourself. Have fun. He who has health has hope. He who has hope has everything. Forumborealis.net YouTube channel Forum Borealis, the program in the shadow of Hippocrates. Motivation and emotion, you are what you think and do. I know you have to earn a living out in the world. Your only motive in life should be to strive to do and become what you feel within yourself as your true nature, the way you were created. What about love? Be who you are, what you feel within yourself and you'll be happiest. I watched the Godfather trilogy on TV the other day. It was the story of a man's life. He carried the violence and the guilt in him from killing his own brother. In the end, every time you sell your soul throughout your life, the self-betrayal stays with you. You either die pure, free, and happy or with this burden of regrets and shame builds up and kills you through some disease. Live by your true nature, release your natural energy, the keys to a great life. I did it after finally figuring my life out at about the age of 28 after living through at least four extremes. Traditional, middle-class Catholic family upbringing, always working at my father's meat business. Four years at a military college. Graduate school at a civilian university supposedly studying educational psychology. My personal life as a seeker of knowledge and pursuer of hedonism and extreme experiences. I sat patiently through all those psychology classes at the PhD level learning about their three flimsy theories. Psychoanalysis, your past determines your life now. 
behaviorism, you can be molded by rewards and punishments. Humanism, think positively. They brought out Abraham Maslow's supposed humanist theory of self-actualization with its triangle shape of noble ideals at the top after man's lower needs are satisfied. What a joke! How does a person self-actualize day after day? Where do self-respect and the craving for euphoria enter into it? Most people I know are focused on making money then comfort, material goods, minor fun, food, alcohol, recreational drugs and entertainment. I, as a brainwashed idiot like everybody else, thought somebody out there knew something more about life than me. I had to listen to all those idiots at college to realize they're all low-level idiots. There is no science of human behavior. We're all extreme loners as individuals. The closest among us are universes apart. I had to analyze my life day by day to figure out what I liked and made me feel good. To put it simply, I have a natural intuitive standard given to me by my true nature after I figured out what it was by getting rid of everything I was brainwashed by to discover the real me. The greatest life is to constantly release most of your natural energy every day as opposed to either. Releasing energy to conform to the artificial values of the world. Being a couch potato, sitting around absorbing all that crap they call entertainment on TV, online, in silly fiction books, playing video games, etc. You can only feel noble, good and worthy of yourself by doing tough things all the time. This is why I know I got it over all those guys and gals with lots of money. It doesn't matter if you're a fat, brainwashed plug. Money is only good to cover your costs for a modest lifestyle. It can't make you happy or feel euphoric. I rarely get sick. I doubt I'll ever get cancer because almost every day I sweat out the toxins through physical activity. Stated simply, holistic medicine is about looking at yourself as a holistic being, doing what makes you happy, unbrainwashed by the world. Betray who you really are and you will live a crappy life like most people who buy into the silly capitalist, pop culture ideas of the world. Most people over 45 are on some kind of prescription drug which is one of the biggest scams around, the lie that prescription drugs are great elixirs of health. You have to live for the right things. Almost everybody is brainwashed by the capitalist pop culture religious patriotic system so they're all on that wavelength to constantly work for money, fame, status and a sense of duty instilled into us from grade school when we're conditioned to get to school by 8.40 and listen for the buzzers that schedule our days. By the time we finish high school, we're on track to work, pay half of our earnings to the government in tax and a big chunk of our other money to banks who create money out of nothing every time they make a loan through a fraudulent system called fractional reserve banking and nobody but me and a few others ever question this lifestyle. I understand that we live in a capitalist world and have to earn money to survive but we don't have to sell out souls to it. Very briefly, life is a choice between two things. Know your true nature and live to release that natural energy inside of you every day to match an inner standard you should feel within yourself of who you were born to be, want to be and must be in order to honor who your God created to be. Go along with the artificial values of the world, give yourself over to some dull job, buy into materialism as the key to happiness, watch TV and other media to get instructions of how to live and what to do. Life should be an intense pursuit of what makes you feel good like euphoria inspiration, lust, love, hard work at what you love to do, hedonism, etc. It shouldn't just be the drudgery of an average job that beats down whatever is natural and joyful within you. Which of these things do you value? Freedom. Answering to an inner voice that obligates you to do what you feel. Health. A feeling of euphoria. Trivial pursuits. A beautiful body. Lots of sex. Constant entertainment. Money. Admiration from strangers slash fame. Food. Love. Nice house. Respect from others. Friendship. Self-respect. Oxygen. How to live a great life in a few steps 1. Eat healthy food, not dead, toxic processed foods. Get as much oxygen into your body as possible. The easiest way is brisk exercise. 
you can do deep breathing like breathe hard for several minutes. Do anything that gets you breathing hard. Some people use hydrogen peroxide on their skin and bath to absorb oxygen. Some rich people buy chambers so they can breathe pure oxygen, ozone, etc. Breathe fresh air not polluted air. Try to sweat every day to get rid of toxins in the body. If you're not strong enough to exercise, try a sauna. Even a hot bath opens the pores and disposes of toxins. The slower the heart beat, the longer you live. Relax, take it easy. Don't stress out much. Chronic stress is when you constantly worry. Some people, like poor people, always worry about money. Drink lots of water or artificially sweetened cool aid water to avoid high sugar drinks. Dehydration is a cause of hypertension, pain, headaches, depression, forgetfulness, etc. Eat live food, food that was once alive rather than processed foods and foods full of chemicals. Try to eat organic fruits, vegetables and meat I opt for the mainstream stuff which is full of chemicals. Try to avoid microwaving food. Avoid chemically processed food like message, aspartame, nitrates, nitrites, sulfates, sulfites, etc. The US government says it's illegal to irradiate most food but food producers can legally irradiate some foods. Vitamin and nutrient contents in irradiated food drop significantly. The measure is kilo gray, kgy. It's putting radiation on foods like vegetables and meats. Genetically modified organisms, GMOs, alter the electrical construct of the cells they come in contact with. They say that GMOs absorb the pesticides sprayed on them more than other foods. If you can afford a water filter beyond the water tap, do it. Try to avoid Wi-Fi, cell phones and living near cell phone towers and big electric transmission lines. This is electropollution. A few prescription drugs help you. Many are poison masquerading as medicine, especially if they list lots of side effects. Try to live in a condition without disease, premature aging, chronic pain, depression and ill health. Live with energy, happiness and mental clarity. You need normal bowel movements. I achieve it by drinking lots of water, eating spices like curry and cayenne pepper in my food, drinking coffee, eating vegetables and other fibery foods to keep me regular. Try to expose skin to sunlight and the outdoors daily. This builds up vitamin D and a sense of well-being. Take your time when eating. Relax and chew. How to live a great life in a few steps too. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. 3 John 2 Some good foods are Asparagus Raspberries Blueberries Melons, figs, garlic, spinach, beets, apricots, avocados, grapes, kiwi, pineapple. Avoid these foods. Junk food, fried, soft drinks, sugar, donuts, candy, cookies, cakes, ice cream, fruit juices condiments, bakery items, foods that contain chemicals, preservatives, additives, artificial flavors, artificial colors, pork products, bacon, pork chops, gelatin, ham, etc. Nearly all oils, canola oil, lard, margarine, soybean oil, exceptions, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, flax seed oil, butter. Genetically modified, GM. Most grains are now GM. Irradiated foods. Shellfish, such as shrimp, crab, lobster, scallops. Soy products. White breads. Alcoholic beverages. Peanuts and peanut products. Baked foods. Yogurt, commercial brands. White rice. Get deep sleep. Brushing or massaging your skin is healthy. It brings blood to the surface. Any hot bath or shower brings blood to the surface and excretes toxins from the body. Grounding is walking around barefoot for a while especially outside. 
Keep a relaxed attitude to your life. Laugh and enjoy life. Try to forgive all those rotten people who did bad things to you or at least don't think about them. Try to love something. If you can't love people, love animals. Believe you were created by a god and that you must honor him by striving to become who he created you to be. Breathe pure clean air outside and inside, I open my windows all the time. Get Hulda Clark's free ebook as a PDF online called A Cure for All Cancers to read about how vehemently she was about getting rid of all chemicals in your house. I used to drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes and do recreational drugs but now I see them all as poisons that don't help you feel better. Bad attitudes are Hate Unforgiveness Anger Jealousy Selfishness Unhappiness Impatience Mayonnaise. Out of control. Good attitudes are. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faith. Gentleness. Self-control. Don't be deceived by any advertising. The rawer the food, the better for you. All cooking destroys some nutrients in food. What is well-being? Make the most of yourself, for that is all there is of you. Ralph Waldo Emerson People have an inherent sense of goodness and dignity within themselves. If they rise to this potential, they become powerful, vital, and healthy. Living by evil will not get you there because it creates inner disharmony on some level. Former doctor, now a lover of people and life. What is well-being? Obviously it means different things to different people. A conventional definition is a healthy balance of the mind, body, and spirit that results in an overall feeling of well-being. To me, well-being is to touch euphoria several times a day in all its intensity and beauty. I've identified five constants that I think are pretty universal. 1. To have your material needs met to the point of basic comfort but not frivolity and extreme excess because that's a sin against nature to take more than you need and squander it while others are starving somewhere yet this is the ideology of capitalist succubus and the American dream we're brought up to believe in and strive for. Get all you can for yourself to live in a big mansion on the hill and buy all the stuff money can buy to show off to others how much of a winner you are while you screw the peasants at the bottom of the hill by either exploiting their labor or rubbing your material excess in their faces. Of all the creatures in the universe, the human is the only one with the greed and ambition to take more than it needs. Native people used to say a prayer to the spirit of every animal they killed, thanking it for sustaining their lives. I believe that of all the people who live in material excess in this world, most know deep down that they are violating a universal law of life in the universe and regardless of whether they admit it to themselves or not on a conscious level, they know they're living out of harmony with the God force that created them. This causes the opposite of well-being, a sense of emptiness because you are living out of balance with nature. 2. The need for self-love, emotional and intimate connections with others as individuals and a sense of belonging in the community. I think human nature is very funny because on the one hand, we all want to get deep love and give it back but on the other hand, we are our greatest enemies in preventing this from happening for what I believe to be two reasons. A. Most of us think we are more loving than we actually are in the cold objective reality of life. We always think we're the most loving one in most relationships who give out lots of love that's never equally reciprocated but the truth is that we're self-centered by design. We're alone stuck in our heads thinking about ourselves. We rarely empathize, get into the other person's head to feel what they're feeling, and I think we just don't have the guts to open up to give off enough soppy intimate love to attract that kind of love back even though we think we really want those deep, intimate connections. b. Most of us live reactive lives reacting to what we feel in the moment right now so that means dealing with feelings of frustration, anger and anxiety because the world is structured that way. You're always thwarted from what you really want by the structure of the greater society which leaves a lot of people feeling slightly on edge so they do the most convenient thing to them. Dump some of this angst on the people least likely to fight back, your loved ones in the form of relatives and friends. I've had close intimates around me doing this all our lives. By now, I accept it as a normal part of the human condition. In the Bible, 
they say love your wife as much as you love yourself, implying self-love is the greatest love by nature. It's the basis of survival, self-preservation, and species growth, to protect oneself therefore one's genetic seed. The lesson is don't worry about all the contradictory messages you get from mass media on the one hand telling you that you're a superstar while on the other, saying it's uncool to love yourself and admit it to others. You live alone in your head. If you don't love yourself, life will be miserable. You have to love yourself and show it by taking care of yourself to try to live a great life otherwise you'll just be a victim of life. You can't guarantee romance and soulmate love but you always got yourself which is why you should love yourself and take care of your health and well-being. Get a pet if you're really desperate for unconditional love. I think the reason they work so well is that I can shower all the love I want onto a pet that I could never do in real life with people because I'm too inhibited in general and people are much too closed off within themselves to be open enough to take this kind of deep love because then it means they have to make the effort to give it back which a lot of people either don't want to do or simply can't do as with many men who are incapable of expressing their love to anyone else except through their work or ability as breadwinners. Pets are the greatest at giving unconditional love back. They are much better lovers than most people. One more thing about this cold, lonely world we live in and the need for intimate connections. The mass media has taken on the role of filling this void for some people who regard the cast of characters in a sitcom or a talk show host as their friends, intimate strangers as they're called in the title of a book I scanned. The internet communities go right along with this people talking to other people online most of whom are taking on fake personas about who they are and most of whom will never meet in real life. I think it's all a poor substitute for real human relationships. 3. To be physically healthy such that you're not feeling any pain and when you wake up in the morning, you feel light and free enough to walk around the block if you want. I read some studies about disabled people which found that after they accepted their disabilities, they went back to the levels of happiness they had before their accident or disease so with physical limitations you learn to adjust. I'm nowhere near the powerful buck I was at 20 but now past 50 as I write this, I'm still feeling pretty vital for my age because I work it and exercise it all the time. To my way of thinking, my body is the only real thing I own in life. 4. I'm a pragmatist which means I live day by day in the moment. I have no illusions about anything. Every morning when I wake up, I know it's me alone that must create my sense of happiness and well-being therefore earn my self-respect for the day. I do this by constantly releasing three types of energy, inspired, loving and aesthetic sensual carnal. In the book, I've broken it down into roughly the release of these three energies in the following percentages. Inspired energy, 80%. Loving, intimate energy, 10%. Aesthetic sensual carnal energy, 10%. This is my contribution to the enlightenment of the world. I discovered that I live by an inner standard that drives me to release all this energy I have inside of me to a reasonably worthy level every single day of my life. It makes me feel good and gives me such a high sense of self-respect that people think I'm arrogant when I'm just being me. I know who I am. No, I'm right and I don't particularly care what any person, institution, or any other entity or force in the world says. Why do you think I'm writing an article like this about well-being as opposed to sitting around watching TV or playing video games like most other people do? I have no choice. I feel this need to release all this natural energy within me all the time. It's a great way to live. It keeps me feeling loose, strong, free, and transcendent. In a word, self-respect is the key to a sense of well-being day by day. You don't automatically get it just by being a live human being. You don't get it by praying to a god, being born a blue blood, having a wad of cash, having a pretty face or having some people thinking you're cool, special, beautiful or a very important person. You don't get it from something you did more than three days ago. In other words, the past means nothing to who you are right now. The only way to get self-respect is to release a good load of your divine, natural God-given energy doing something that you perceive to be worthy from the depths of your soul day by day. Nothing else in the world can give it to you. If you're stupid and naive, 
you will go around thinking approval from others and fame, status, or notoriety from the community will elevate your sense of well-being but they do nothing to penetrate the loner you are in the essence that is your soul. Only lost souls fall for this transient praise to try to elevate their fragile egos. It doesn't work because it comes from beyond you as opposed to you creating it yourself. It can't do anything to sustain you for more than an hour. It doesn't matter if 10 million people think you are the champ because you scored the winning goal. You still get up the next day to answer only to yourself for that day of living. My definition of self-respect is to what extent am I being original and inspired with my life, releasing energy to that end. Releasing aesthetic, sensual, and loving energy makes me feel good but they don't give me self-respect. I only get it by releasing that inspired energy that honors the person I was born to be. 5. I feel that the spiritual argument for believing in something external beyond you like religion or some new age ideology to give you a sense of inspiration, hope, comfort and love is the weakest constant for well-being around because like I said earlier, I'm a pragmatist. I live day by day in the moment creating my life as I live it. If there's a God, I'll deal with him when I die. Right now, I'll honor the person I feel I was created to be by whatever created me. I live the best that I can for me, not by following some external code beyond me. Having said all that, I have read studies where the belief itself in an external deity like God has helped a lot of people through hard times and cured them of medical and mental illnesses so belief in God or something else is a good tool for well-being for some people although not for cynical, independent people like me. I might use God as a literary device in a phony way when I'm down and tired. I ask him to bathe me in his glowing, pure, bright, white, healing, empowering light and beam it into me to make me feel strong, good, noble and whole. Then there's the whole new age positive intention stuff that the universe will open up to you if you will it so with good intentions. This is the cornerstone of a fraudulent self-help book industry. Well, that's it. These are the five constants of well-being that I've found in my explorations of life. It all comes down to one thing, the attitude with which you choose to travel. I could talk about this stuff forever because I believe in it so much, for instance my belief that's counterintuitive to society's belief that a materially humble or modest life is much better for a state of well-being than an extravagant lifestyle of material excess. Michelangelo said he was happiest doing what he liked to do which was sculpting stone, living on a stonecutter's diet of cheap bread and wine and he lived to the age of 90 in those primitive times when most people didn't make it past 40. I truly feel that one of the big causes of a sense of inner emptiness within our society is our lifestyles of material excess which we must feel wrong about on some level because we're all perfectly aware that there are kids dying every day somewhere on this planet because they're not getting dollars worth of food and a dollars worth of medicine while we're worried about the style of tile on our kitchen splashboard or own 25 purses and all kinds of other garbage that adds nothing to the inspired, original, creative, spiritual, altruistic pursuit of our lives. That's why I harp on against pop culture capitalism. It has created this spiritually empty, generic, soulless society we live in. If you don't believe me, look around. Once we get past all these facades people have, especially the ones trying to show off how cool, trendy and slash or wealthy they are, you generally see a mess of lost souls like the characters in F. Scott Fitzgerald's novel The Great Gatsby, all these wealthy people with no sense of purpose or meaning in their lives. I've rambled on enough about well-being for now but I enjoyed the process of writing this article. It helps me express who I am, get that angst out of my system and maybe helps another human soul along the way. Most of this book deals with medical and mental well-being but I cover the other constants of well-being in some of my other books. I think well-being as a philosophical subject of discourse is interesting because I'm constantly thinking about how I can feel anywhere from good to transcendent and live a better life. Well-being websites. These are websites I got from talk radio, magazines, the internet, etc. Some are way out there in voodoo land, some are good, some are entertainment. Try number 613.04234 or RA776.5 at the library for books about men's health and well-being, generally exercise and diet books. Welcoa.org
Wellness Councils of America, Health. NLM.NIH.gov slash Medline plus slash Wellness and Lifestyle. HTML, Wellness and Lifestyle Topics. 21 stcenturymedorg 3 a dash w e l l n e s s dot com